Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Goblin's Pocket, a show where we review stuff and tell you whether it's worth spending your hard-earned time and money on it. That's what we do. I'm Monica. I'm Ian. Hello, Ian. How are you Hello. today? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, yeah, I'm getting kind of excited. I'm hoping to kick off a new campaign with some nice people soon. So Yay. that's exciting. Love d and I'm a bit... Um, I'll tell you what, actually, I'm, I've been really like Jones into play recently. So I went to a local bar that has a D&D night on Wednesday. And it's really cool that they do that and they welcome newbies. And I was pretty excited about it. Um, and then I turned out and it was nine players. And, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, and I was just like, oh, gosh, I wonder how this is going to go. And um, hats off the DM smashed it. Like really, like, yeah. I couldn't have coped with, with everything that was going on. Some of the players were incredibly annoying. I think I rolled, I was there for three hours and I rolled a D20 twice. Oh no. So oh. It, yeah, it was, it takes a lot of time to get around a party of nine um, yeah, it does. and it involve does. everybody. So um, yeah, there were some very dominating characters um, and uh, yeah, I probably won't go again. But, you know, uh, but it, kudos to the DM, you know, like yeah. they managed nine people. That's like, yeah, they did a really good job um, over partied. Yeah. Really. How about you? What's new? So what's new? Nearly got killed at my last encounter in a D&D game. That was fun. Um, yeah. Like, you know, it's just standard stuff. Lost all my hair because of a wild magic roll, but that's OK. <laughs> I'm a changeling. I can grow back yeah that was a changeling trait coming in clutch yeah. um but you know it was a really good session it was a lot of fun and i have another campaign that i'm playing this weekend this Ooh. week where i have a feeling like we're at the big you know kind of like a doom 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 moment cliffhanger and mm. i'm very excited to play because you know stuff is happening mary you know what's happening please make it good well you know she's gonna make it good but please don't kill us that's what i meant to say um, <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah very i have a DD filled week and that's the best week i'm jealous I'm super jealous <laughs> um right okay so today today's yes. a show and tell mm -hmm. so because of our long-standing tradition we're mm. gonna do rollies to decide who goes first i have a sparkly orange dye autumn dye uh, ian has his only d20 uh yeah. let's go for it that's so mm. loud not so motherfucker I, when am i ever gonna win one of these I'm, i didn't roll good this time i got a three oh, so. <laughs> i got a six yeah great <laughs> over to you i don't feel like every I feel this I is like, like I, I I will let you go first. No, 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 no. Where no, the chooses? No. No. no way. No. No way. Up. Okay. No way. Well, okay then. You know, if I have a must. So mm. today we have a map build episode. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. I think. Yeah. Got some map, mappy things. Yeah. A mappy, a mappy episode, and I'm going to be talking about incarnate, which Ooh. is a map making website. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of it? I have heard of it. Um, mm -hmm. My last DM used it and we start, just started using it. Um, and um, yeah, I spoke highly of it. I've not actually checked it out myself, though. Yeah, it's um, very varied because you can make battle maps, you can make city maps, you can make continent maps, but you can also make, uh, they call them isometric scene maps kind of like in perspective so you can also kind of give them as like a vibe type of thing in a, in a campaign um and there it's quite straightforward you have a, a kind of a an array of things that you can use to populate your map and the quantity depends on whether you choose to go with the free version or the paid pro version mm. now the free version gives you access to over 900 HD assets and you can make 10 mm -hmm. maps. 10 maps, it means you can store 10 maps and that kind mm -hmm. of means anything, right? Like you can just switch them out. It just means you won't be able to modify them or keep them for future campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, and the pro version costs five pounds a month or 25 pounds, 25, sorry, dollars, five dollars a month or 25 dollars a year, which I think is like, okay. wow, that's, yeah, it seems a lot cheaper, right? Like just a lot cheaper. So yeah. 
$25 a year because it just mm. makes more sense. Um, and you can, you have access to over 19,000 access. Wow. So you, like the world is your oyster at that point. You mm. can, you can create maps with all sorts of designs, all sorts of objects and uh, really make it your own. Um, I have used incarnate personally to create my, uh, world map or my continent map. And mm -hmm. it was really easy to use. Uh, really straightforward, quite fun. I won't lie, because I just got to like place mountains here and there and decide what cities were and, you know, make things green or dead. And it was quite fun. Um, but it all works with like a stamp tool that you just kind of place stamps of things that you like all over a map, fundamentally. Um, there is a very detailed level of personalization, especially in the pro version. You can choose textures, you can choose vibes and lights and kind of, you can you can personalize from everything from the layout to just the over like the the minute details that you have on a map. Mm. Um, it works, I suppose. I've never done that, and you would have more experience than me. Like an image editing software, you can play around with some settings like opacity and mm. et cetera, et cetera. If you have had experience with those softwares, I think this will be like a very dumbed down, simplified version of one of them. I have never used one. I am the least visually creative person you will ever meet. Uh, therefore, it, it takes a while to, for me to get a hang of how to do things and how to work things out. However, not rocket science. Like, honestly, it's actually relatively intuitive and you can create basic battle, map, battle maps or basic map, maps from the very beginning. They have regular updates so you can get new stuff um, all, all the time. And they also have, for people like me, ready-to-use maps created by the community. So oh, cool. once you create an account, you have access to all of these maps that other users have created, which is, mm -hmm. which is pretty, pretty handy. Oh, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'd um, be interested to see some of the maps you've made. Maybe we could put them on the Instagram or something Yeah, like I'll that, put my, so. my continent map for sure. And we obviously will have a link in the description for the um, actual website. Mm -hmm. uh, they do give you a browse of the kind of maps that you can make on the website just so that you can, you know, feast your eyes on all the beautiful things you could possibly make. Yeah. Um, and they have recently created, I think very recently, created a Twitch channel oh, cool. um, where they stream um, tutorials for the maps. Mm. And it's great because you can kind of see basic stuff, uh, but you can also see how to like take your map making game to the next level, you know, how to mm. use perspective, how to make the map just visually beautiful, how to give perspective on like the world or, you know, I just had a little browse and they just had just had so much information. So, um, you know, you can just hop over to the Twitch channel and just see kind of the process uh, before you sign up. Oh, I'd love to see that. Yeah, we'll put that in the, um, the, the description as well. Oh, that sounds yeah. great. So once you've made these maps how are you using them or like you would download them onto uh -huh. your uh on, onto your computer in a pdf so you can share them you can use them you know however you play online or you can print them for the you know if you have a home game that you have in person um the maps come with a grid so you can have a gridded map for a, for a battle map or you can just you know for example i shared my continent map online with my players because it's not really the kind of thing that they need to have in front of their eyes all the time mm. right it's uh, the kind of thing where they might reference that they might reference if i give them a piece of information or law yeah it's um, really useful so it's very easy to just download the maps on your computer and just you know share them mm. yeah oh great so you you're using that as a dm mostly i am using it as a dm it is definitely yeah. a dm resource not okay. necessarily a player resource I can't envision any reason why a player would need to create their own maps mm. unless they really want, you know, let's say yeah. you have a DM who is super kind. And, yeah. Well, you know. I, I, I think, um, you know, I'm not a big, I'm a, not a big um, advocate of backstory prior to a campaign. Like, I think a lot of people, uh, you know, there's, there's always a, there's a bit of a meme or running mm -hmm. joke about big backstories um and um oh no have we lost monica <laughs> oh no i lost you for a second you're Sorry. back you're back my internet it's okay. connection disappeared <laughs> in real life you um, were saying i'm not a 
I'm not a big advocate of um, backstories for characters. Uh, I don't encourage my players when I'm mm. acting DM to go to in depth with backstories i've had some occasions in the past where somebody is dictated where they come from and the mm. dm just be like that doesn't exist like that's mm. not part of my but i think the only time i could see some like if you're a bit further into a campaign and you said look we are going to be going to your hometown where you go i think it'd be really cool for a dm to say exactly. to a player go out and create a map go create a map and show me yeah. where you come from like if you've got that communication between a dm and a player i think there's definitely opportunities um for players to get involved with things like map making and that world building a, yeah that's a beautiful way of putting it because mm. it like there's a, a visual the visual element of dnd is not fundamental theater mm. of the mind is absolutely a valid way to play you can you know, keep everything in your mind and just be a storyteller but the visual element can help other people understand what you have in your mind especially if you're not very good at you know Mm -hmm. narrating it and yeah. it gives the dm a resource to say okay this is your school let's have mm -hmm. something fun happen there you know like it gives the dm inspiration to have things happen in that city that you as a player created so it's a very yeah. beautiful way of using it that i hadn't even thought about so yeah yeah oh awesome so um you know i'm guessing you you've got the pro membership like you said the free i membership. do not i actually have oh. the free membership and yeah how... yeah um i i I played around mm -hmm. today because it was fun. <laughs> and I would say the the free version is great if you are starting a campaign, if you want to um, have an idea of what kind of things you could make with maps. We will get into more detail or into it a bit more in future episodes, but there is a world of maps out there. You don't necessarily mm. have to create your own, yeah. right? Um, however, the free version is a really good way to get your hand accustomed to the system to mm -hmm. understand whether you like making maps and whether it's something that actually helps you as a dm rather than just hinders you and stresses you out yeah that's what um, i was about to ask actually yeah. roughly how long does it take to make a, a a battle map for you know your next session um you can it can take as little as you know 15 minutes because you can okay. have like you have very basic designs like the layout, layout of a house, uh, like walls that you can place here and there, trees, like there's very basic things that you can do for a basic encounter in mm -hmm. like the woods, let's say. Um, if you want detail, it mm -hmm. can take a lot longer. However, I'm only saying this with my very limited experience of making visual things. Mm -hmm. So I spend more time trying to figure out what the settings do, which I realize is a shortcoming of mine yeah. <laughs> not a shortcoming of the website yeah i think i the only thing similar that i've ever used i think i downloaded a program called i think it was dungeon draft or something mm -hmm. like that and i'm I, you joke but yeah i'm somebody who's got lots of that kind of visual experience uh and using tools and i found making maps so time consuming mm -hmm. in the grand scale of all the things that you have to do as a dm making maps is one of my Least, least favorite things to yeah. do I, considering i love visuals and i love all that sort of thing like if i can't get like uh, i would rather find the map on yeah. google like absolutely but it, i mean it sounds like this is worth something worth checking out yeah it's free so you might mm -hmm. as well if you're if it's something that sparks your interest check it out try the the free version they do have a marketing tool when you open the stamps that you can add everything mm -hmm. that has a little star is pro so you can't use it however yeah. you see it and you feast your eyes on all the beautiful things that of you course. could have if you only paid so yeah. you also have an understanding of the things that you would be able to add if you were to pay for the yeah, pro version 25 dollars a month that's pretty it's, reasonable it's like twenty-five dollars a year is nothing yeah you know? oh sorry a year yeah i mean you, yeah it's like two and a two dollars a month sort of thing yeah and it, really so you know we've made this very clear we both believe that you can play mm. D, D for free like you yeah, can play definitely. D, D without paying and a dime yeah however this is a relatively low cost service for quite a good variety of things that you could do um so if it's something that you would just enjoy because you enjoy making your own maps and adding this to you adding them to your world then it might be the thing for you okay cool right yeah. so 
does it how does it rate for you have you you well have you used anything similar like how did you explain tell me you, you I tell haven't me. used many similar things I have used ready-made maps that mm -hmm. other people have made um which are beautiful and everything however I have found them limiting in some ways mm. so I would give incarnate a 14 I would okay. say um pending more use because I am not a DM at the moment so I haven't really explored it to its fullest it could mm. go up it could go down 14 is a provisional yeah. provisional role for me yeah great oh it sounds like you've enjoyed it so I have something. enjoyed it this morning yes oh good um great well um yeah I'm sorry I haven't got many more questions like that's um, okay that's yeah. okay I'm I I I was just listening to you I was a rat and I think yeah I'll go give it give it a go um, I'm about, like I said I'm about to start up a campaign I've got this cool tv like battle map tv that I'm going to be using so I'm going to need some digital maps so yeah I yeah. will I challenge you to create a free map on incarnate and then mm. see how you get on and then you can share on uh, one of our socials your, your okay. experience I need context else it's just going to be penis island right? <laughs> sorry do it um, do it <laughs> um, nice. all right cool well uh let's take a break and then we'll come back with um my review which is d20 uh, roll 20 roll 20 roll 20 that's yeah. the thing you're reviewing that's the thing <laughs> d20 i'm just gonna just just review the dice i think it could do with an extra side or yeah two. 21 um, is really the, the thing mm -hmm. yeah yeah no right we'll be back right see you in a bit Bye. see you in a bit Hey, got an idea for something we should review? Or been thinking of buying something for your D&D collection but the price has put you off? Why not join our Patreon? For just £4 a month, you'll get a say on what content we review, and when we buy something using Patreon contributions, we'll raffle it off to our patrons. So, you'll be in with a chance of winning the thing you wanted us to review anyway. Good, right? So, go find us on Patreon, at The Goblin's Pockets. And of course, all new supporters get a shout out on the latest episode because we love you. Um, hi, we're back and it's my turn because so I rolled serious. a three. I know, right? <laughs> this is business. Monica, reviewing D&D content, it's not just my passion. It's serious business. Um, oh like these people, they're relying on us. Um, and um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stuff serious stuff they're not <laughs> you can make your own decisions this is just what we think um and here is uh roughly 15 minutes on what i think of roll 20 um so uh, for anybody who doesn't know roll 20 is an online virtual tabletop platform um that is to say you go to a website you register you become a user and you play things like D, &D pathfinder call of cthulhu all of these different tabletop role play games you can play on a screen and on that screen you've got a uh, chat box with dice rolling you've got little video um avatars so you've got video chat you've got voice chat and you've got interactive maps uh it's kind of the full package um of you know of how to play D, &D remotely um and yeah it it works pretty well i've uh, i've um i've banked about 730 hours um on roll 20 it keeps a handy log right there on the front <laughs> dashboard to make Just you feel tell like you. oh that's what you've been doing with your life the last few years um and, <laughs> it was a pandemic don't judge me roll 20 <laughs> yeah seriously um and yeah we did start because of the pandemic so we were a group playing in person and then covid hit and um excuse me we all went to um online play and um I've played a couple of campaigns as DM and I've played a couple of campaigns as player. So I've got a pretty good um, insight to it. Uh, that's 730 hours. You could probably chop off 300, 400 for DM prep time mm. in all seriousness. Whoa, okay. Yeah. Um, I, there's no way of actually looking, but I imagine if I was compared against some of the other people I was playing with, they wouldn't, have, well, maybe, maybe not quite that much, maybe more like two, two to 300 hours, but it's a lot of time. Um, I mean, I'll, maybe I should ask some of the players that I played with. Um, but yeah, it, um, 
it's 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 a big name you've probably heard of it before oh, if you're yeah. if you're new to D, you might not have in which case you know it launched in 2012 it was a like a really it's really successful kickstarter developed by these three guys who were playing D at college and then they went to jobs in different cities and they wanted to keep playing so they created this tool and then they were like oh let's sell it um so they sold it they did really well off of that um it was officially licensed by wizards of the coast in 2016 so the content in it is legitimate uh, like D D content this isn't some you know back alley uh website that you're you're going to be looking at here um yeah, like I said, you can play all sorts of different games on it. Um, and when I say you can play different games, when you when you create a campaign, it asks you what is the game system you're using. And part of the reason for that is that it does a lot of the the maths and things like that, and it offers you things like character sheets. So if you pass, you know, when I play, I usually play Dungeons and Dragons. And if you're listening to this, you probably do too. So when you you select that, it's like each grid is five foot for instance, in Dungeons and Dragons, that's pretty common. So it will set all those map dimensions and things like that for you. Um, and then it'll create character sheets that you can or can, you, you can use, but you don't have to use. Um, I never actually use them. I've used a paper one in front of me. Um, but from what I can see, the interactive um, character sheets are actually pretty useful. Um, <clears throat> and in a nutshell, the way it's used is a DM will create a campaign Within that campaign, they will have various maps, which act as kind of the, uh, you know, dashboard for for play. Um, you'll upload a map onto your user account, uh, and it will sit in your kind of media storage. Mm -hmm. um, and then you drop your map onto your your grid. You scale it all up. You line it all up, and then people play. And you put little tokens, and all those tokens are usually um, assets that you've uploaded again um and you can give control of certain tokens to your players um and then they can move them around and yeah it's 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 it can go from pretty basic for the free user um so it's completely free to use and if you do use it for free as a dm you'll have like 100 megabytes of storage um which is i've played a whole campaign um, with 100 megabytes of storage if you use image compressors definitely capable um, of doing that um, and um, yeah it's it's got things like you can have a uh, fog of war and darkness so you can hide areas and then uncover them so as your players move through the area you can go right you go into this room and then you can uncover that area so that's quite nice um, and uh, if you've got the premium accounts you can that that happens automatically so you can make the mm. characters as they walk around they discover areas themselves um and you can put all sorts of um that's like the dynamic lighting that they've got and i have used that as well so i've gone i've been a player i've been a dm i've used the free i've used the premium like i think i've got a pretty good overview the only thing i've not done and this is another one of my <laughs> it's going to happen again uh, the only thing i've not done is <laughs> bought all of the books so yay wow. <laughs> let's buy the books for a third time you've got them in physical you've got them on D, &D beyond now you can earn them on roll 20 yay. uh yay and they cost just Gotta as much catch as all, all the other ones yeah um but yeah in all seriousness um we need integration wizards of the coast please man, it's it's rough please like you, uh, if you've listened to our last episode you'll kind of know what my, how i feel about D, &D beyond um if it were me and I had somebody had a gun to my head and you've got to buy a book on either D D Beyond or Roll Twenty, I'd buy it on Roll Twenty hands down. It makes sense because you can use it. Wow. Like from what you say, you can can you use the resources that are attached yeah. to the book? Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. So if so. you if you bought something like Curse of Strahd, you'd get all of the monster tokens preloaded, like you, so you can drag and drop them straight away. All the monster stat blocks are right there. You get all the maps, and they're all automatically scaled. And they all work, and they just it all just works. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, it's I, I don't even know if I said you've got like a a dice roller within Roll Twenty. Yeah, you mentioned it's briefly. got everything you need to play. Honestly, um, I'd never buy, but again, I've never bought a book, and I still managed to like and never bought a book on Roll Twenty, and I still managed to play all of the campaigns just fine on Roll Twenty yeah. using stat blocks from other websites in different tabs because it's just in a browser window, so I just jump between and look or printed out um, stat blocks for my monsters and things like that. All of the tokens are 
tokens that I've found online or I've created using the token makers, which are all over the internet for free. And then you just upload them, you drag and drop them as you need them because, you know, yeah, you can put the whole monster manual on there, 250 monsters, but chances are for your campaign, you're not going to use 250 no. different monsters. So you just find what you need. And there is a free library of stuff on there and you can buy individual tokens as well for, you know, a few pence or, you know, a few dollars here and there. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty versatile. Um, not the best tool for map making. I think it works really well with something like Incarnate where you make the map elsewhere, you bring it in and then that is, there's your map. Um, that re really does work well. The I kind of mentioned the interactive character sheets. Um, if you build a character out properly, you've got those auto click skills and things like auto yeah. rolls and all that sort of thing can work nice. for you as well. And there is actually a companion app for your phone and iPad, oh, which I'm pretty that. sure. Yeah. So if you've got a properly created character sheet on your phone, you can click the roll, like you can click the skill and like, oh, roll for acrobatics. You click acrobatics on your phone, it will roll it on the app in the browser window the browser. that you're playing with. So there is some in integration that works quite well. Um, for the most part, a player will never have to pay, pay a penny. Like, yeah. well, again, it, it co comes down to that thing. If your DM owns a book, say your DM's just bought Mordecai and his monster of the multiverse with the 30, 30 odd races in it and all that sort of thing there. And they, they can share that. They can share that with you. Oh, so okay. You, Is you it automatic? It. Like yeah. automatically they, they share yeah. it to. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So it's, it's a bit, um, it's not as, it's more cost effective than D&D yeah. Beyond. D &D Beyond, Beyond you should learn a few things from this. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah so you can do that uh but the dm you might want to step up to the premium and so going from free go to premium it's six dollars a month so it's not the cheapest but you get three gigabytes of storage so you can get loads more high fidelity assets and maps yeah. and that sort of thing uh dynamic lighting that i mentioned where the tokens that move around uncover the map as they go i've used that it's a pig to set up because you have to go honestly it adds so much onto prep time like yeah. so much onto prep time um and you mean the free version like the having to do it yourself rather than dynamic lighting or the dynamic lighting itself so you import a map yeah on the free version you just make the whole thing black and then you just draw rectangles and that uncovers an area for instance yeah. so a room you draw a rectangle it uncovers it for everyone to see they okay. go into the next room you draw a new rectangle it covers it in the dynamic one, you have to go in and you have to draw in walls and those walls then create barriers. There's a new layer. Oh, okay. Cause you can only see you can only to see, the wall. Yeah. You can't see behind yeah, the wall. Okay. Exactly. So you're basically potentially creating a map in our incarnate, exporting it, uploading it to roll 20, and then you're going to go over and you're going to redraw every all wall of the barriers with a shitty tool that is really janky and yeah it it's super time consuming like i know a lot it's of people cool, but maybe not worth it yeah so um that this is uh, you can go up to a higher level which is like ten dollars a month and it gives you like dev um access sort yeah. of basically you can copy assets between games it's it, you wouldn't do it unless you're doing online professionally yeah like, there's no need for um but okay so that's that's what it can do yeah in a nutshell yeah my review of it um as a dm super time consuming um getting the maps scaling them aligning them to the grids it's, it could be more user friendly um I, I rate it and it works really well once you've got it going. I love the token management and all that sort of thing. Really nice things are things that you can you can check um, distances. So you click on a guy and yeah. you, you put an arrow so you can see where 120 foot is. You can see what a 60 foot radius looks like. All that sort of thing. You can draw on the maps like freehand, all that sort of thing. That's really nice. And um, yeah, I've had a lot of success and I've really enjoyed using it over the years. Um, there are things that I would change about it, um, mm. definitely. Um, and yeah, things, well, I don't know. The dynamic lighting feels like it could be a lot easier to set up, but ha yeah. like, I, I'm not, I'm not that developer. I'm not that wizard. Um, yeah, you know, it's not it's, me. <laughs> yeah, but equally we've used it. Um, I had a friend who ran a, a one shot 
from it and basically they just use the map area as a scene set so they put a cool like photo that they found like not you know a cool bit of artwork they found on google they put it there and they just used it for um theater of the, the mind theater of the mind yeah okay. so everything was then we had the voice chat we had the video chat and we had the dice roller so yeah. you can go as big or as small on it as you want and it is flexible in that respect yeah. um another thing about roll 20 which is you, you may or may not have if you've ever gone onto google and you've googled what's the prone condition in D D? chances are the first result is roll 20 because the yeah. compendium that they've got is one of the most user-friendly free yeah. compendiums you'll find yeah. um and if you've if you're signed in and you've bought more content it'll come up with even more yeah. the 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 kind of the quick look rules are really good like i said i don't use D D beyond and that i know that's one of the benefits of D D beyond but roll 20 has got a lot of that as well yeah um yeah. so it's it's doing a lot for a free product it really may is I, doing a lot yeah go may for i it. share with you my own experience of roll yeah 20. yeah definitely please summed up in i was uh, dipping my toe in dming Mm -hmm. One of our, one of my DMs use, uh, uses uh, Roll20. So I thought, you know, I'll use Roll20. Rage quit after about mm -hmm. 20 minutes. That yep. couldn't just achieve anything. And ended up using Google Slides. <laughs> However, mm -hmm. like the compendium, I know the graphic of the compendium immediately because mm -hmm. I've used it so much as a player you know, the, I need to just quickly check that rule. Like, I, I don't remember what that means. Yeah. It's so user-friendly. It's so easy to find. Like, it, even as someone who doesn't use Roll20 as a DM, it's mm -hmm. one of the best resources that you can have, free resources that you can have. It is wild to me that it's so, like, I found Roll20 so incredibly unfriendly oh, yeah. as, a, as a DM. It's not. Um, it's not friendly at all. Is it just my my? I, no. it, am I just bad? <laughs> no. Um, however, I would say that if you if you're going to go to roll twenty, if you've been thinking right, I want to play online, I need to set up a game. I'm not feeling what I'm currently using, or I'm starting from fresh. Go immediately to the support page on okay. roll twenty. Don't even don't even try and set it up yourself because you will stress yourself out because it is, it's not user friendly. It's not user friendly in the slightest. So many controls that you would expect to see are not there. Um, and yeah, it's things like aligning a map to a grid are a pig. Like they're an absolute pig of a thing to do. And there are better ways of doing it, no doubt. Um, yeah, it is it, it can be quite painful. Um, very time consuming, as I said. But you did say, like, you know, if out of 700 hours you mm. guesstimated that twenty like 200 of those hours had to go to like prep, that's yeah. not very user-friendly. Like no. that's not that's not quick. No, it's know? it's not. It is. It is a detailed product. Um, I know there are other alternatives out there. If you go on any Reddit page or anything like that to say alternatives to Roll20, there are plenty out there. Not all of them are some of them, like I tried one called Astral, which I would say is even less friendly personally mm -hmm. because it can do so much more. Um, but there are some, God, there's one I'm sure it's called like Bugbear something or other like that. Like uh, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll try and find it and review it properly at some point. Um, but there are simpler things out there as well. Um, yeah, Roll20, it's, it's got that, that heritage. Like it is the most like fleshed out but like they've got a full like character builder like you've got in D, &D beyond yeah. like you can go through and it's like the wizard step by step like like oh you're a fighter then you'll need this stat this stat. like da, 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 you build it and you roll your shit like exactly the same sort of thing mm -hmm. so it is borderline a competitor for D, &D beyond and I wonder, do you think mm -hmm. that now that Wizards of the Coast have acquired D, &D beyond there might be a future in which the two services are combined Possibly. in a giant will conquer yeah. the world. Well, I mean, if DMD Beyond added this chat and map like feature, they'd they'd wiped Roll Twenty off the face of the earth. Like, uh, but that's what it's built around more than anything: the integration with the maps. So, I just don't know. I, yeah. I honestly don't know. Um, other things about it that are not. The, uh, I'm, I'm going to give it a rating and these are some things that will drop it down the servers or 
oh my god it's sketchy like <laughs> if you if you play at a high traffic time of day like a Friday Saturday night something like that you're gonna have dropouts the amount of roll 20 games where especially in lockdown the amount of roll 20 games where we would be playing and somebody would just disappear and then somebody else <laughs> would just disappear and we or you can't hear them or you can't see them or, or something like that and we've had to have like Facebook Messenger for like the voice aspect of it mm. and then like running alongside it 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 it's, it fails sometimes, definitely. Um, we've had many an occasion like that where we've yeah. been all been on the phone whilst still using the kind of interactive map aspect of Roll20, which seems to always be fine. Yeah. Um, sometimes you'll click for a dice to roll and you will just be waiting, waiting. <laughs> and like... 30 40 seconds before the dice rolls and it's painful it's um, suspense it's just a cliffhanger yeah man. um some people Don't will you. still roll their own dice in person uh it's got some cool features where you can roll a dice just to a dm or you know the dm can roll it without anyone being able to see oh, it nice. all those sorts of things um but but yeah it's it's really good clunky it's a bit it's clunky. a bit clunky it's it's yeah it's not the most polished thing in the world and it's trying to do a lot mm. you've got to think all these different game systems that it can run it's got to work for all of them yeah and yeah it it's it's good and it's bad all at the same time um what is the rating that you would give because you seem like to have very mixed <laughs> opinions about this yeah and it, this service it might it might surprise people but I think for what it is and what it does, I'd probably still have to give it like a 14. Okay. Yeah, which for me is pretty high. It is pretty um, high. I've put 730 hours into it and I've tried other things. I have okay. tried to get on to other things. And like, like you said, when you rage quit, I've rage quit on other things. <laughs> and I don't know if that's just because I'm so like in tuned with the shitty way that Roll20 does work. It's now your. It's now part of your blood. Yeah, like it you... just it, it kind of makes sense to me. Um, but yeah, I think the the scalability of it's really good. Like you can all come in, use it completely free, and get a really good experience out of it. If you're willing to put in a little bit of work, go find your own tokens, your own maps, all that sort of thing. Do a lot of asset management, renaming and setting up, and that sort of thing. It's a lot of work for the DM. Um, just bear that in mind you need okay. you need hours of availability a week to you know um to make it work unless you're just doing scene setting and stuff like that but it is it is good it is a good tool like what it says it does it it does um okay. and I, I i can't fault it for the most part it's just that it's a pig to set up um and it does it does trip out on you quite often and i don't know like if that's just the service they're using or, or what but they've got like eight million users over yeah. eight million users like it's really popular it's big yeah. like it is big if you've not used it like you probably will at some point in yeah your life. i've used it as a player and mm. as a player it, it does like it does what it says on the box like yeah. we did have to use discord as a voice chat in addition to mm. because of what of the problems that you discussed but yeah you know we could like you can you can move your token on the map you can measure things you can understand areas of the of effect like you can chat you can whisper like all these kinds of things are very useful as mm. a player as a dm like my dm probably like mentioned it is the bitch to set up so i i think i might give it another go when i start my campaign again i will do like you say and just jump straight into the support section yeah and just it's it's really try good. not to understand it myself because yeah. i otherwise i'm probably gonna rage quick mm -hmm. well, you can always call me as well yeah I've, I've Ian, some, how do you do this <laughs> yeah uh, I, i'll try and help but yeah so <laughs> I, I i would recommend it i okay. i definitely would i would also recommend well i would also you know if anyone's got any alternatives or things they use um that they prefer please tell us about them um yeah Get yeah, let us know. Let us know, guys. Like, have any of you used Roll20? We're really curious because we have very different experiences of it. Mm -hmm. uh, let us know. Um, you can find us at the Goblins Pockets on Instagram. You can write us at thegoblinspockets at gmail.com. And you can support us on our Patreon. Please do, because 
They're really nice people, guys. Yeah. Uh, and the more, you know, um, we've mentioned before, if we get some more followers on Patreon, we'll start buying more things and reviewing yes. some stuff that you've maybe got no idea about. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll, yeah. Uh, we'll hopefully hear from some of you guys soon. Yeah. Cool. Thank you guys for being with us and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.